My name is John Kenyon, and I'm the Executive Director of the Iowa City UNESCO City of Literature Organization. And I'd like to welcome you to the final day of the 2019 One Book, Two Book Children's Literature Festival. We've had some amazing programs over the past two days, and we're excited to present today's program right out loud. Iowa City is one of only 28 UNESCO-designated cities of literature in the world, and so it's obvious that we take writing very seriously here. As is fitting for a city of literature, the young people in our community are amazingly talented. Our organization wanted to find a way to recognize and celebrate that talent, so we created this Write Out Loud event. We asked students in grades one through eight from throughout the Iowa City Cedar Rapids corridor to submit one page of original writing. It could be a story, an essay, a poem, an illustrated story, or just about anything else they can put down on paper. Our partners with ACT here in Iowa City evaluated these pieces and selected grade level winners in two different categories. The first is The Right Stuff, which is judged based on language, clarity, structure, and emotional impact. The other is From the Heart, which is judged based on creativity, passion, and expressiveness. Now, in addition, they identified other top students in each grade, and these students today will receive honorable mention recognition. Now, today is made possible by the support of many organizations. We've received financial support from the Community Foundation of Johnson County, 100 Plus Men Hawkeye Chapter, ACT, US Bank, Iowa Public Radio, and we also received the support of the University of Iowa President's Office to be able to use this facility today. So I am going to get things started with our first graders. They're going to help me show everybody else how we do this thing. Hopefully our first graders are all ready. And so I will ask if our first grade honorable mention winners and our grade level winners will come to the front of the stage and wait there for me to give your, give, uh, call your name. So our first grade honorable mention students are Alyssa Denany from Hoover Elementary. Great, and you can just wait right here in front of the screen. We have Goldie Grove from Kirkwood Elementary. And Layla LaRoche from Van Allen Elementary. And now we have our Right Stuff winner, who is Isabella Corius from Lincoln Elementary. And Isabella will read her piece, My Best Friend. My best friend. My pet I like to jump. My pet I like to play. She is so furry and so cuddly, I must say. When she wobbles her head, I can hear a jingle bell. When she... When I pet her soft back, she lifts her fluffy tail. Sometimes she tries to sneak outside. Other times, she likes to hide. She's so silly, and she even eats dog food when her cat food is right beside. She likes to play with my hands, and she pretends to eat them. She has sparkles in her eyes, and they glow like a gem. My pet cat is my best friend, and she'll be the there till the end. All right, thank you, Isabella. You can get your certificate from Julia now. And we will welcome to the stage Sloane Seebeck, who is from Hoover Elementary, who was our From the Heart winner. And she will read one, two, three, four, five, Once I Caught a Fish Alive. One, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I let it go again. Why did you let it go? Because it bit my finger so. Which finger did it bite? It's a little finger on the right. Hmm, 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 hmm. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. I wish I never caught that fish. Five, four, three, two, one. It bit my sister on the thumb. Why did it take a bite? Because she gave it a nasty fright. What did she do to it? She gave it a face that looked like this. Blah! <laughs> All right. Thank you, Sloan. Can you get your certificate from Julia? And now I would like to welcome to the stage the new Iowa City Public Library director, Ellsworth Carmen, who will help us to introduce our next two grades. Ellsworth. Would our second grade students now please come to the foot of the stage? Just like the first grade, you'll come onto the stage in the order you're called um, to receive your certificates. Our second grade honorable mention students are Firkin Butali from Kirkwood. 
Lillian Dubé from Van Allen. <laughs> Olivia Lieberman from Weber. <laughs> Molly Nolan from Lucas. <laughs> Sally Owens from Hoover. <laughs> and Ananya Signa Adhu from Tiffin. Okay, so then we'll welcome up our Right Stuff winner, who is Ruby Van Hooklem from Van Allen Elementary. And Ruby will read The Little Boy's Adventure. Once upon a time, there was a lonely little boy. Days passed, months passed, even years passed. Then one day, the little boy found a bear. The bear was a boy and lots older and lots bigger. The bear said, would you like to stay with me? Yes, said the little boy. Where do you live? He asked. Under the stoplight to the left, I scare everyone who goes on the street, said the bear. Oh my gosh, said the little boy. Yes, said the bear. Oh my gosh, said the little boy. Yes, said the bear. Oh my gosh, said the little boy. Yes, said the bear for a third time. Okay, 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 say, said the little boy. So you live by the stoplight. Yes, said the bear. So they lived under the stoplight for a very long time. The bear fed him, the bear took care of him, and everything else that the parent would do for the boy. For a long time, the bear was a parent for the boy. Soon, the boy was old enough to take care of himself, so the bear left him all alone. Soon, the boy got lonely again, so he went to an orphanage to be with other kids to play with. So the little boy lived there at the orphanage for about seven months. Then finally, someone wanted to take care of him. The boy was so happy, he finally had a family. When his new family showed, showed him his new room, there on the bed was a stuffed bear. It looked exactly like his old friend. Every day, the boy and his new mom and dad played ghost in the graveyard after school. The little boy and his stuffed bear would be on a team trying to spook his new parents, just like he used to do with the bear on the street. He was so happy to finally have real parents to take care of him, but he would never forget who first took care of him, and he had a stuffed bear to help him remember the end. Next up, we have our From the Heart winner, um, who is Nadia Holden from Regina Elementary, and Nadia will read Snowflake. Starts in the sky, floats down beautifully, then fades away as it falls. The stars make it glow, then it finally lands on me. Moon surrounds us. I changed to be better because I tried. I now would like to ask our third grade students to come to the front of the stage. You will come up onto the stage in the order you're called to receive your certificates. Our third grade honorable mention students are Eleanor Collins, Hoover. <laughs> Gabby Swertney, Weber. Hannah Hadlick, Hoover. <laughs> Maggie Wynn, Borlaug. <laughs> Anna Platt, Longfellow. <laughs> Mirka Punakar, Wickham. <laughs> and Lisa Soka from Horn. Our The Right Stuff winner is Willa Ullman from Wickham Elementary, who will read The Living Library. The Living Library. You may think that library should be quiet. Well, the Iowa City Library was anything but quiet on the night this tale took place. As dust settled, the books sitting peacefully on the shelves began to shimmy, then to shake, and each one began to pop off the shelves like movie popcorn. When they hit the floor, there was a flash of light, and the characters so many of us love, once only confined in words and imaginations, emerged from their stories. The fiction section burst into reality. 
The first character to sashay out of a leather-bound copy of Beauty and the Beast was Belle, holding a book and looking lovely in her yellow gown and silk slippers. She hurried to hide amongst the book stacks, when out strode a Gaston with a chest buffed out. Next, Judy Moody skipped from the pages of her paperback book with her hair messy as usual. Judy crossed her arms and looked, looked around to see who else had come to the party. She saw Cinderella and some other princesses sipping tea, but Judy was in a particularly bad mood and stomped off to sulk in the reading corner. Princesses, she mumbled on the way. From the holiday book aisle, the Grinch flew from his book and landed with a mp. Here again, he stalked off to join Judy Moody in the reading corner. From a picture book aisle, out marched King Max, ruler of the wild things, in his beloved wolf suit, while in the background there was a hoot, howl, and growl of a wild rumpus. It all seemed like the typical living library night, until the sound of Ray's voices coming from the corner drew the attention of all the others. The Grinch and Gaston were arguing. What did you say, roared Gaston. Your story is not the best, muttered the Grinch. Oh, yes, it is, shouted Gaston, and they broke out in another barrage of insults. King Max gleefully joined in an insulting Gaston's story. Then the Grinches, then Gaston's, then the Grinches, then Gaston's, then the Grinches, then Gaston's, then the Grinches. Well, you get the idea. To make matters worse, Cinderella joined the fight. She had looked down and found her shoe missing. Then she be- had began to accuse the others, which led to more shouting. Then the nonfiction section got into the act. The person that had been chosen to represent them tonight was George Washington, who stepped out of his book in a regal pose with his hand upon his velvet jacket. When he saw the fiction characters bickering, his elegant face contorted in disgust. I cannot tell a lie. My story is the best. It's real and educational. George was soon drowned out by all the ruckus. To make matters more confusing, positive picture book characters meandered around the argument. Pat the bunny hopped by. Pat the bunny, it asked hopefully. Strangely, everyone stopped arguing to pat the bunny. Then, Rainbow Fish went swimming by in the air as if it were water, handing each of them a scale. Each of them stopped arguing long enough to accept their scale and utter a thank you. But the pause was only momentary as they all went back to bickering. Suddenly, in a poof of emerald green sparkles, Harry Potter appeared with his wand raised, ready to cast spells. Harry cried, Pertificus totalis, freezing everyone in their tracks. What is all this racket about? Harry and Fro Cinderella, who answered, We have been arguing about whose story is the best, which is silly, of course. Harry nodded in agreement. Cinderella continued, Because obviously my story is the best. Harry rolled his eyes. Everyone's story is worth a read. We all have something to share. As the first rays of sun... Of, sun, of the sunrise, peeked over the window, Harry and froze the rest of the characters. Gaston the Grinch bedruggingly hugged. The characters dove back into their books, and the debate was settled. Until next time. Great. And our From the Heart winner is Kinsey Freitag from Longfellow Elementary. And Kinsey will read her piece, Friends. It was March 25th, 2015. I was walking out of my friend's house when I saw my brother crying in the car. I I opened the door to the car and sat down. My mom said that she had some news for me. She said, we are going to move. I was speechless. I found out later she had already told my brothers that I was at a sleepover. I didn't know what to do. Should I cross my arms and be mad? Should I ask questions and be fine with it? Should I be happy that I wouldn't have to drive an hour just to go to the grocery store? Would it be fine in our new town? Three months later, we all got all of our rooms all packed up, except for my mom and dad's room, where we slept for two nights while we waited for the movers to come. It was fun, but I was also nervous. We played a lot outside and got and got to see the moving truck. The truck was huge. The movers arrived one day, loaded all the boxes in the truck, and drove away. My mom and dad said that we needed to pack our bags for three days because we were going to stay at our friend's house while they got all of our new house decently ready for us. We already got to see it, see it, but just briefly. So after that, we all, we got all of our stuff and left. Two months later, 
we quickly got all settled into our new house. I liked it, but at the same time, didn't know what to think of it. My brothers got a share room, but I got my own room. Then it was time to start school. I was really nervous. When we pulled up into the school parking lot, my mom took me in. Me in. Dad took my brothers in, and my little brother was already dropped off at his daycare. When I walked into the room, a girl came up to me. I was in a grumpy mood, so didn't really want to even be at school. I said hi back, but in an awkward way. The next day, the same girl asked me again if I could play with her out at the on the playground. Now I wanted to know what her name was and if she really wanted to be my friend. Her name was Jada. I thought that was a great name. I was excited to get to know her and be her friend. We became good friends from all the troubles that we had. We made a pact to be best friends. We had been through a lot together. We made nicknames for each other. Mine is KK and hers is JJ. In kindergarten, the, we had the best teacher ever. She got me through a lot of tough times, especially friend trouble. She made me excited about school and very smart. All the things I've done so far in elementary, I want to thank her for helping me with it all. I still get to see her at recess and talk to her about everything. Jay and I are with each other every week. We have helped each other through it a lot of times. During tough times in life, great people always get you through. P.S. Jada, this is for you. Thank you, third graders. Our next presenter is State Representative Amy Nielsen from North Liberty, who represents Iowa's 77th House District. Amy, if you can join me. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Now I would like to ask our fourth grade students to come to the foot of the stage over here. And you will come on the stage in the order that your name is called to receive your certificate. Zaid Aldos from Van Allen. Lily Bonner from Penn. Audrey Briggs from Lemmy. Ava Casey Van Allen. (laughs) Olivia L. Abiad Van Allen. (laughs) Colin Finch Van Allen. (laughs) Clara Frank Penn. (laughs) Sophie Ho Wickham. Isabel Knutson, Lemmy. <laughs> Naomi Lay, Weber. <laughs> Nadia Sprague, Lemmy. <laughs> Sydney Van Heckelum, Van Allen. <laughs> and Kylie Westling from Lemmy. And our The Right Stuff winner is Aliana Hoffman from Van Allen Elementary, who will read Time to Surf. Time to Surf. This was it. I looked down at my feet as my tummy twisted in knots. I was about to try surfing at a place called Surf School. We were in a small wooden shed full of wetsuits and surfboards. When I managed to look up, I found a woman. She had a blue wetsuit on. I looked at the other vibrant shades of the wetsuits, holding the colors tight in my mind. Then again, I stared at my feet, feeling the warmth of my mother's soft tan. A young man wearing a beach hat gave me a yellow and black wetsuit. At least I think he was wearing a beach hat. When I was chained, we went out to the driveway and I studied the other kids. There was an older boy, about 14, with red hair, and there was a younger girl with brown frizzy hair. And there was my brother, a smile on his face. Maybe deep inside me, there was that happiness, that smile. I looked down at the surfboard, washed with the color of ocean blue. I walked over to the last one and cautiously stepped on the old board. It was cold and damp and it sent a shiver up my spine. I watched as the leader came out carrying the same ocean blue surfboard. 
surfboard. We began to talk about safety and the basics. We practiced standing on our boards, getting up, and paddling. After we practiced it a lot, it was time to do it on water. I didn't feel so good. I didn't feel prepared. I shivered, my teeth hitting against each other. But it wasn't because I was cold. I ran over to my mom, hugging her tight. I just wanted to leave the, in the pain of my shivers and anxiety to just go away. Is there a way I can do just land and not water? I asked my mom, gripping tight on her jeans. But the water's the fun part, she answered me, hugging me. Holding my hand, she led me to the white van where the other students were piling in. The van was wet and soggy. I looked around at the beat-up van, having visions of me surfing the waves. I looked at the soft leather seats, wet from fellow surfers. The van suddenly stopped. We were here. I followed my brother to the sandy beach. Our mom waited for us there, a big smile on her face. I can't do this, I whispered in her hair, my face burning a pale red. I dug my toes into the damp sand, thinking about all the things that could go wrong. What if I fall? What if a shark attacks me? My whole body burned with the anxiety. The visions of my worries swirled around me like a tornado. My hair blew in the wind, my feet dug in the sand. Wave crashed against the beach. My life flashed before me. I knew it. I knew I had to do it. I put my hand on the surfboard. I knew it'd end soon. I would be safe. But right now is time, time to surf. And next our From the Heart winner is Lana Greenleaf from Hoover Elementary who will read My Only Friend. Hi, my name is Avery. I live in Chicago, Illinois. Life is hard. People are rude sometimes and you can't do anything about it. It's what I get for having a hearing aid. Now you're probably thinking, am I deaf? Well, yes, and it seems to be a big deal. Tomorrow is school. This is the worst day ever because it's my first day of middle school. It makes me anxious. New kids, new school, new teacher. I'm going into seventh grade. I only have one friend and he's not in my class or grade. You're probably asking yourself, who would be my only friend? It is my dog, Juniper. He is a sh German Shepherd and he is mine. He is the only best friend I have ever had. He is the most protective friend ever. Oh my gosh, today is school. I think I'm going to walk to middle school by myself. After I get there, I'm s standing at my locker and the girl next to me is a cute girl. I just like cute girls. They're so popular. When I went to math class, I noticed I have to sit by this really pretty girl. Soon after, she starts whispering really mean things about me with her friends. I try to ignore it, but I end up walking home after school in a bad mood. Later, my mom came into my room and said, how was school? I told her everything that happened. She said that she was thinking that she could homeschool me so I didn't have to deal with the bullying. The next day, I went to school with Juniper because he is my service dog. Everyone thinks that it's no fair that I get to bring a dog to school. When I went to my locker and grabbed my math stuff, I went, when I got to class, I heard the mean girls say that my dog was horrible and they have better dogs than I and they were going to bring their dogs to school. They called me names because I am deaf. They also hung me notes on my locker. After math class, I told the teacher about what happened. The next day, I went in front of the room and explained to everyone how they were making me feel. I said, today I'm going to tell you why I have a dog at school. My dog's name is Juniper, and he is my service dog. He is a German shepherd and my best friend. You're not allowed to bring just any pet to school. I am deaf, as some of you know, and he helps me with some stuff. Some people hurt my, my and Juniper's feelings. I hope you all understand and thank you. Then at lunch, everything changed. I sat by the mean girls. Once they said they were sorry. They told me that they were going to try to make me feel better and milk, make me be, feel welcomed at my new school. I said that's okay and I hope that I won't do it again. They asked me if I could stay the night at their houses. Of course I said yes. They were finally being nice to me. When I got home, I asked, my mom asked me again if I wanted to be homeschooled. I told her now I'm fine and I'm going to a sleepover on Friday. I went to the sleepover and had the most amazing time of my life. Thank you and congratulations. Parents, go ahead and take some pictures of these wonderful kids. Okay, our fifth grade honorable mention students are Hazel Burner from Man, <laughs> Gwen Dow, North Bend, <laughs> yep. 
Haley Kellogg from Garner. Duraya Money Lucas. Eva Ortega Lopez from Wickham. Isabella Rank Garner. And Abigail Sigafus from Hoover. And our, the Right Stuff winner is Rachel Hawk from Lemmy Elementary, who will read The Coffee Shop. I sat down in a cushioned chair with my coffee and looked around the coffee shop. A Saturday morning is a time when everyone comes to get coffee. A mother was holding her child by the hand, ordering coffee with extra whipped cream. A group of teenagers was laughing and sipping their frappuccinos. An elderly couple talked peacefully, drinking their mugs of hot coffee. There were so many different ages of people in the coffee shop on this Saturday morning. I focused my eyes on an old woman, maybe 70 years old, bringing, bringing her cup over to the side counter. She had the happiest smile on her face. I could tell this was the best part of her day. She waited patiently, not knowing if she wanted cream or skim milk to complement her brew. She finally decided she would add the cream to her steamy, hot, cu hot cup of coffee. I leaned over in my chair to watch the cream mixing in the brown liquid. The white was swirling into the brown coffee like fluffy clouds. A hint of sugar, she exclaimed, taking a pinch of sugar and dumping it into her cup. Ah, just right, she said, as she mixed the ingredients together. Slowly, she walked with her cane, carefully keeping her, her cup from spilling. Chuk-clunk, chuk-clunk, she steadily shuffled until she finally reached her table. With a slight wince, she eased herself down and relaxed. Ba, ba, ba! Startled, I looked up and saw a chubby toddler running down the aisle, weaving his arms and squealing. He had a toothless grin and shrieked as if he were ecstatic that he escaped from his mother. Abruptly, he stopped when he reached the old woman. He looked up at her and happily greeted her with a smile and a wave. Oh, isn't he the cutest, the old woman said gleefully. I am so sorry, said the frantic mother. He always runs away from me like that. Oh, don't be sorry. He's the sweetest thing, the old woman replied. She smiled happily and tore off a piece of her cinnamon roll and gave it to the toddler. The little toddler squealed in delight and grabbed the chunk of cinnamon roll from the old woman's gentle hand. He planted it in his mouth and gulped it right down. Satisfied, satisfied with the trick, Sticky treat that left his hands covered with frosting, he patted the old woman's knee in his own gesture of thanks. Beating with delight, the old woman clasped the plump little hand and proceeded to converse with more giggles and joyful smiles. They shared the cinnamon roll until the last sticky morsel was gone. Waving goodbye, the mother and toddler continue on, continued on their way. As I drank my coffee, I realized that this is what matters most in life. Smiles, laughter finding joy in one another. It doesn't matter how old you are, it matters how we act toward each other. We should be kind to one another and think about the little things that make life so much better. I smiled to myself and continued to enjoy my coffee. Our From the Heart winner is Alma Bandari Narayan Unan from Mann Elementary. And her good friend, Hazel Burner, will read Alma's piece, Coming Home. Coming Home. When I left, it was spring, branches bending in the graceful breeze, shush, shush, brushing against each other. Flowers shyly reaching out, their petals are arms, saying, hello. Green leaves unfolding from their tiny buds, restarting the circle of life. I was sad to leave, but now I'm glad I left. When I returned, it was fall, the crisp wind biting my face, shaking the branches. It knows who's in charge. The leaves crackle mischievously under my feet. They turn the world into an explosion of color, laughter. The flowers drying up, making room for new blooms and other plants. Soon, I will leave again. Thank you and congratulations everybody. Parents, go ahead and take those pictures.
And now I would like to invite to the stage Lisa Roberts, who is the Assistant Director of the Iowa Youth Writing Project, and she will introduce our next grades. Lisa. Hello. Would our sixth grade writers please come forward to the stage? Our sixth grade honorable mention students are Leon Ahmed from Borlaug. Ava Bruxvort from Wickham. Charlotte DeLowry Willowind. Michael Fulmer from Horn Elementary. Fiona Graber from Weber. Anora Klauke from Lemmy Elementary. <laughs> Olivia Lehman from Hoover. <laughs> Jani Owens from Hoover. <laughs> Alex Schultz from Horn Elementary. Ella Slattery from Wickham. <laughs> Lauren Spence, also from Wickham. <laughs> Vera Tanis from Wickham. <laughs> Richard Yang from Borlaug Elementary. OK. And our Right Stuff winner is Andy Billerbeck from Solon Middle School, who will now read for us A Flash of Scales. Ka, ka, a flutter of black, black feathers emerged from the trees. A crow flapped away from, a, from the swirl of orange and red leaves stirred by an 11-year-old girl named Briar. She skipped along, blonde hair flowing, delicately making her way around the clusters of honeysuckle surrounding the path as she studied the animals in the woods. Binoculars whisked by her side as she walked up to the tree stump and sat down, watching the blue, blue jays squabble over treats that they had found. She stared up at the sky, wondering, why did the animals just go silent? A whoosh in the trees, and then silence. The blue jays stopped shrieking. The chipmunks and squirrels stopped snuffling in the dead leaves. Even the wind, which had been delicately blowing, halted in its weightless tracks. Everything was still, quiet, lifeless. What just happened, Briar said under her breath. She stood up, shoving the binoculars into her pants pocket. She wanted to go, to leave the eerie silence. She started to walk back up to the path when she heard a sudden crashing in the brush behind her. She turned abruptly, almost tripping over her own heels. The noise stopped. Briar's eyes scanned the honeysuckle in front of her. Wait, was it that? A flash of scales, a shadow. It was huge and rising out of the brush in front of her. Briar breathed heavily heavily, tentatively taking a step back. But the black shape had made it up out of the bush. No, it can't be. Whoa. Briar's eyes widened, her heart skipped a beat, and her stomach twisted. A dragon, standing in front of her. A dragon, its, its scales shining in obsidian, its eyes deep, amber radiant. It unfurled its broad wings, which, which had a wingspan of around 35 feet. The underside of the dragon's feet the dragon's wings were speckled with glowing star-like patterns. Briar stifled the scream. She didn't want to attract attention because the dragon didn't seem to notice her. She slowly walked backwards, but her sock got caught in a stray stick that was poking out of the ground. She yelped through clenched teeth and winced, then watched through widened eyes as the dragon whipped its head around to face her. Briar gasped as the dragon narrowed its eyes. Smoke curled up from its nostrils. It growled, slinking closer as if to investigate her. Then very cautiously, Briar took a step toward the dragon and reached out her hand. It reared its head back nervously. Briar quickly pulled her hand back. Please don't hurt me, night dragon, please. Briar held out her hand again as night watched through his amber eyes. Finally, Briar felt the hot black scales on her palm. She sighed, I did it, I actually did it. Suddenly, Briar heard her mother's voice through the trees. Briar, it's time for lunch, hurry up. 
Briar turned to night. He was breathing hard, his chest heaving in and out. Briar knew that she had to do something. Then it came to her. She knew what she had to do. Mom, come here. You have to see this. She yelled so loud that night almost bolted into the air. Her mother came bursting through the brush. Where is it, Briar? I mean, what is it, Briar? She asked as if she didn't see anything. I need to show you something. Briar answered, turning around to face night. But he was gone. Her mother took Briar's hand and pulled her away. Briar never saw night again. And our From the Heart winner is Luis Solano de Almeida from Willowin School, who will read How the World Goes. Move around, look alive, listen to the world's beautiful sound. Will that be true if the Earth's health wasn't already looking down? California's on fire, Florida's hurricane city. Nevada's drying, can someone please see that our planet is dying? All right, maybe that was a little insensitive, but I thought it was okay because it was said by our representative. And that's not all. Michigan's water is unhealthy, West Virginia is obese, Ohio is depressed, will someone pay attention at least? And we're not even done. Media is like a bug in your hair, spreading lies here and there. Um, and does anybody even care? Alaska's filled with smoke. Oregon's already said bye. Sometimes I wonder if I should even try. But hey, that's just my opinion. If you think we can change, then go ahead. But I already said what needs to be said. Thank you, sixth grade writers. And now our seventh grade honorable mention students are Zaira Ahmed from North Central. Fiona Arnold from Southeast. Thomas Barry Mike from Northwest. Brooklyn Bolton from North Central. Caitlin Elmer, North Central. Gracie Hennings, North Central. Nevea Hoffman from Northwest Junior High. Kamakshi Kuchal from Northwest Junior High. Ben Munson, North Central. Jillian Nielsen, North Central. Addison Prantner, Southeast Junior High. Colby Reese, North Central Junior High. Ryan Schmierer, North Central. Spencer Thomas, Northwest. Isabella Tisdale, Northwest. Nina Torkelson, West Branch. Amy Varga, Northwest. Aaron Varga, Northwest. Andreas Warren, Northwest Junior High. Carly Wilkins, North Central Junior High. <laughs> Olivia Williams, North Central. <laughs> Athena Wu, Northwest Junior High. And now for our Right Stuff winner, she is Leela Strand from North Central Junior High who will read 
Partition in Delhi. Partition in Delhi. Purva was scared. She could not find Surya. Amma Napa said she would be there. They said it would be okay. She closed her eyes. Deep down, she knew this was inevitable, but she still cried out in vain. Surya. Her lifelong friend, Lakshmi, also cried out, but she was soon answered. A young man came running over. Purva recognized him right away. It was Akil, Lakshmi's brother. He had been working for the colonial government for so long. They both screamed in joy and joined in a big hug. Akil, have you seen Surya? No, I didn't know to look for her. I'll drop you off at the house and see what I can do. He started walking and they followed. As they walked, Porva looked around. Starving, injured, dying people surrounded her. People desperately looking for their loved ones. Others being reunited with those they hadn't seen for months or even years. There were so many different motions around her and yet they all made her want to cry. When they finally reached the house, they were greeted by an old lady. Lakshmi ran over and gave her a hug. Aji. Hi, Chinna. I was so worried about you. How'd you manage to make it all the way here? Porva sat down on, in a chair to the side and watched as they had their reunion, watching them but a glimpse of hope. She wondered what the future held for her. Would she, where was her sister? Would she ever see her again? What had happened to the rest of her family? Would Lakshmi let her stay? Before she knew it, she was asleep, her aching body at rest. Porova opened her eyes to see the old lady bustling about. What was she doing? For a while, she just laid there and watched as Udgy shadows moved up and down across the room. She listened to the murmur of people outside. When Udgy finally noticed she was awake, she had fin finished making sambar. It smelled so good. Porva noticed her hunger and her mouth watered. Without saying a word, Udgy handed her a plate and watched her for a moment as she ate. When she finally finished, Porva thanked her wholeheartedly. It was a delicious meal. Did Akil find Soria? Not yet, Porva looked at the ground. A tear rolled down her cheek. Aji had put her hand on the poor girl's knee. Our entire nation has suffered greatly from this terrible event. We managed to make it through with each other. We must be thankful for that. You will be part of our family now. Together, we will build from the ground up with this newborn family in a new nation. Hardships will be faced with dignity and courage. When we make it through to the other side, we will help others like us. Everyone is born on this earth with the opportunity to succeed, to blossom, to be the best version of ourselves, and that we will. Porva looked up to see Lakshmi and Akil walk in carrying Surya. Look who we found. Porva screamed in joy. She ran over and held the little girl in her arms. She was thankful. She looked at Aji and smiled. Smiled for hope, for family, the one she had lost and the one she had found. Together they would build a new nation, a new future. And now please welcome to the stage our From the Heart winner, Eleanor Hanna from Northwest Junior High, who will read Freak. Melody's walking over to me. I can feel my heart beating faster and my face getting hot. What do I do? What do I say? I can't be partners with her. I'll try too hard to act normal and she'll know I'm unusual. If I were a boy, she might not be uncomfortable if I act unnaturally because after all, most people get tongue tied around their crushes. Too bad I'm a girl. Melody arrives at my desk. Howdy, partner. All right, so James A. Garfield, the 20th president of the great US of A. Do you want to do the essay part or the presentation part? I don't care what I have. Uh, well, I ponder the choices. I guess I'll take the essay half. We better get started if we want to have any free time over the weekend. She groans. Don't remind me. Anyway. He was born on November 19th in 1831 in Moreland Hills, Ohio. I try and epically fail not to zone out looking into those beautiful gray eyes. Melody is such a pretty name. It has a nice ring to it, don't you think? Then I see Chelsea sneering at me from the other side of the room. Great, now that I know specifically who I like. After school, I try to hurry out, but I wasn't fast enough. The mock dolls caught up to me. They are a gang of five, also being the most feared and worshipped girls in the entire middle school. Everyone calls them the mock dolls because they're fake, unconditionally beautiful, and have no feelings. I used to be one of them until I trusted them too much and told them I was a lesbian. Hey, freak, says Chelsea nonchalantly. Where exactly are you speeding off to? We heard you were partners with your crush. Isn't that so sweet, sighs Honey, her voice dripping with sarcasm. Why? If only she were a boy. I know I'm different, I spit, trying desperately to formulate a logical escape plan. Leave me alone. You corner me every day. Can't I catch a break now and then? 
By the way, where are Julia and Eva? They usually show. They have cheer tryouts, a sickeningly sweet voice behind me answers, nearly scaring me out of my skin. Didn't you know? Oh, God. It's Avery, the ringleader. She used to be my best friend. Usually, she lets her entourage deal with those who displease her, so I'm shocked that I made it on her personal hate list. Chelsea and Honey exchange a nervous glance. Even they are afraid for me. I don't turn around. Avery, I scoff. Old friend, I thought you didn't like to get your hands bloody. Or has your mom rubbed off on you? The last thing I remember is a crippling pain in the back of my skull. I told the wrong people I'm a freak. Some would accept me. Everyone should. Thank you so much, writers, families. Now's a good time for a photo. I'm going to introduce our last grade level here, but before I do, I, you know, I wanted to make a couple of points. One is that, as somebody who's overseen this event for years, it's extraordinary to see this many seventh graders and the number of eighth graders that we have coming here. Uh, in some of the years, it was a little lean. It was difficult for us to get those uh, upper grade kids to write, so thanks to all of you for writing and continuing to express yourselves and, and submitting pieces. It's wonderful for us to see uh, if we can take any small credit that we've trained these kids throughout the years because we've seen a lot of names uh, pop up again and again. And I did want to take a moment and just ask, how many of you kids out there, just by a show of hands, this is your second year of, of being recognized at One Book, Two Book in some way? Get them up high, I want to see. Okay, what about your third year? Anybody? Okay. One or two? How about fourth year? Maybe got one. Fifth year? So fourth year. All right. So that's great. I mean, that's what this is all about, is for us as an organization and us as a community to recognize young writers for their talents and skills. Uh, we live in a wonderful community, and it's very easy for young athletes to be recognized. It's, it's very easy for young musicians to be recognized, as I know a lot of folks had to sneak out to go over to a Prusel concert at Hancher this afternoon. But uh, sometimes uh, those creative endeavors, we don't take the time to stop and tell our kids that they're doing a great job there too. And that's why we do this, that's why we have this event, is to make sure that we stop and tell our young writers, you're doing a great job and we want you to continue. It means a lot to us. So now I would like to ask our eighth graders to come down to the foot of the stage, our honorable mention students and our grade level winners. And we will round out our day. All right, so our honorable mention students are Aiden Dingbaum from West Branch Middle School. <laughs> Lindsay Dykstra from West Branch Middle School. <laughs> Wyatt Fitterline from West Branch Middle School. Going to get to the students that are here. Rhiannon Fletcher from West Branch Middle School. There we go. James Fountain from West Branch Middle School. Kyle Harold from West Branch Middle School. Abby McNeely from North Central Junior High. Gabriella Rushton from West Branch Middle School. Andrew Samuelson from West Branch Middle School. Sadie Smith from West Branch Middle School. Carly Staker from West Branch Middle School. And Bailey Walker from West Branch Middle School. I have to ask, is there anybody left in West Branch? All you guys are here. That's wonderful. All right. So our The Right Stuff winner this year for the eighth grade is El Isabel Peterson from West Branch Middle School, and her piece will be read by her mother, Kenzie. You're a coward, Hayden. Dad's words. You're a coward, Hayden. Only four of them. You're a coward, Hayden. Brainwashing. You're a coward, Hayden. True. Hayden? Selena stammers, terrified by my sudden breakdown. If only people knew how close I was to doing this every day but they don't, and I have to keep it that way. She makes the sound that she always does when she's frightened, the noise that sounds so much like an injured puppy, carelessly kicked in the face by life itself. Hayde, her voice cracks and she chokes on her own tears. Hey, Stack, wh what's wrong? I don't answer her. 
Instead, I swallow whatever sound would have came out of my mouth. I'm not sure if it would have been a formulated string of words or broken syllables intercepted by sobs and continue to remain silent. I rub my eyes tiredly. I hear her begin to cry louder and louder. Hayden, she weeps, please answer me. I don't. Her cries get even louder. She chokes again. I stand up from the couch and walk towards the bathroom, the thoughts growing stronger no matter how hard I try to get rid of them. A part of me feels selfish for just leaving her there with her tears, but I need to think about myself for once. I'm sure that if I had stayed on that couch, I would have either started crying in front of her or I would have laughed hysterically and maniacally because of my mental state, like a patient isolated in an insane asylum with only the walls as conversation partners. Upon entering the bathroom and locking the door, I hear heavy yet light footsteps racing up the stairs and another door closes and locks. I still hear her cries of agony, though they are stifled by walls and floors. I try taking a deep breath, hoping that maybe some of those stupid breathing exercises that they teach you in stress management classes will help me clear my mind and empty my thoughts. They don't, and I only feel a dread resting in the bottom of my stomach like an anchor weighing down a boat when I look up from the ground and see my reflection in the mirror. Same eyes, same nose, same lips, same bone structure, same height, same skin, same hair color, same eye color, that strange piercing color that looks like it wasn't sure whether it wanted to be brown or yellow, so it settled for a blazing amber color encased by a small golden outer ring. They look just like his, down to the last abnormal speck. I feel like I'm going to collapse to the floor and maybe even pass out or die, so I let my legs crumple underneath me, hitting my forehead on the bathroom counter as I go down. The noise resounds in the bathroom that is too big for such a small and broken family, and I'm almost certain that the sound would have made it to Selena's room up the stairs. I lay there on the floor for a couple seconds, focusing my gaze completely on the fan droning quietly on above me, and the thoughts swarm my head, a very unwanted presence, like mosquitoes in the summertime. Why do I live this way? Anger. Why do I pretend that everything is fine? Frustration. Why does Aaliyah hate me so much? Jealousy. Why does she have to assume so many things? Bitterness. Why do I have to be a father for my sister? Desperation. Why can't he do that? Resentment. What if I'm not there in time? Terror. Why can't I just quit? Depression. Why do I have to look like him? Grief. Why doesn't he love me? Loneliness. You're a coward, Hayden. Thank you. And our From the Heart winner for the eighth grade is Violet Mowry from Southeast Junior High, who will read her piece, Remembering. The van pulls to screeching stop, tires crunching over gravel. As I push the door open, the fresh smell of grass and lichen trees greets me. The wind whispers, welcome back. A fluffy white seed from a cottonwood tree blows into my face. I cover my mouth before a huge sob escapes. My parents swing open their doors and join me standing there. Mother puts her arm around me as father turns away so he won't see him brush away his tears. Everywhere there are shadows of what could have been, what would have been. Things that I would have taken for granted, things that I would have yelled over. Little reminders of things we did wrong, things we thought about, things we ignored until it was too late. He exists in everything he touched, still there, taunting me, crying for me, wondering why we could never make him happy. He is one of the numbers, one of the 123 a day that take away their own lives. He is just a name that is whispered down the hallway, gossiped about at parties, fake cried over to get attention. On the dock, our names are carved together, brother and sister, friend one second, enemy the next. Our names have both been crossed out and rewritten. I don't remember what we were mad about. Maybe he got the front seat, maybe I got the top bunk. Maybe we were just cranky from the long drive. Maybe I felt like I was always ignored, that he was the only one that mattered to her parents. Maybe he regretted every single breath he took, wondered why it was so hard, and was losing reason to keep going. Maybe I thought he was spoiled, favorited. Maybe he was in pain and wondered why no one noticed. Maybe our parents pushed him too hard, and only when he was gone they truly learned how to love. I remember summer after summer of us coming here, running and jumping and singing, arms in the air, carefree. I remember the way the same food we ate back at home tasted a million times better when we ate it here outside on a picnic table. I remember thinking that the whole world was perfect. I remember being happy. I remember when he found him, locked in the bathroom, unconscious on the floor, empty pill bottles surrounding him. Remember the echoing sirens, remember that it was too late. I remember the tears. I remember the casserole after casserole that the neighbors and the school PTA members brought over. What I don't remember is why he did it. 
I want to go back and scream at him that he didn't have to do it, that he just made everything harder. Why did he only think about himself? I push down the feelings of anger that are struggling to rise. He's dead. Maybe he made a mistake, but he's dead. It doesn't matter if he would regret it now. It doesn't matter if he couldn't think clearly, didn't really mean to do it. He's never coming back. He exists only in the rememberings of others. All right, thank you, Violet. Now, folks, parents, if you would like to get uh, photos of these talented young writers, now's your chance. All right, so congratulations to all of today's recognized students. You have a clear talent for writing, and no matter what you choose to do with your lives, I hope that you will continue to, to indulge that. So I just wanted to take a final moment before we let you go to, to say some thank yous. First of all, thank you to Lisa and Ellsworth and uh, Representative Nielsen for helping us to introduce folks today. I'd like to thank the volunteers who helped to get everybody where they needed to go and the City of Literature staff for helping out to make this a success. I also wanted to thank our sponsors. Again, Community Foundation of Johnson County, 100 Plus Men, ACT, US Bank, and Iowa Public Radio. Daydreams Comics also helped us out uh, throughout the course of the weekend. I also wanted to give a special thank you to the area teacher librarians and the principals and the classroom teachers who helped us to spread the word, who encouraged their students to write and to submit, and who every day help our students to get better with their writing and, and skills. Yes, by all means. I also would like to thank the team at ACT, led by Joshua Haveman, who evaluated the hundreds of submissions that we received this year, as they have done in the past, and helped us to narrow down and, and uh, figure out which of these pieces and which of these students should be recognized. So they did a wonderful job to help us again. And I would also like to thank all of you, not just for coming today, but for supporting your young writers, the young writers in your lives, and to uh, continue giving them the tools that they need and the time and space that they need to continue to indulge in their writing and finding opportunities to help them to get better. So thank you very much for that. And with that, I will send you on your way. So thank you very much. Uh, hope you had a good time today.